You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that's ready to jack into the cyber zone. I'm Trackball, and I'm a runner in the Matrix. <laughs> I'm Microchip, and I'm plugged in. And I'm Dial Up, because you're still waiting for me. <laughs> oh, we... There's a good sound for the soundboard. There the we sound go, of yes. The dial up modem connecting. <laughs> Perfect. I'll add it. <laughs> so, hey, thank you all for tuning into the show this week. We have a bunch of news to go over a lot of PlayStation news, a lot of Matrix news. But first, let's talk about some things we have been checking out. Check it out! What? I just picked an, picked one at random. I don't have what a... What is that? What is that? That is Zangief yeah. from oh, right, Street right. Fighter, the movie, the game. <laughs> God, that is so bad. The Saturn port's not that bad. <laughs> well, the Saturn port is basically Street Fighter 2 Turbo yeah. with the sprites drawn over with, with uh, <laughs> motion captured. No, that specific sound is the sound of entering your quarters into the machine. So if you have a roll of quarters and you want to play for a while, you'll hear (laughs) 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 it's amazing. I mean, honestly, most of the, most of the arcade games I played when you put the quarters in made like, you know, like a gun cocking sound. You mean it didn't sound like this? (laughs) No, it did not. (laughs) All right. So yeah, let's talk about some things we've been checking out this week. As far as uh, my stuff goes, uh, what I've been checking out mostly are a bunch of Let's Plays on YouTube. Just kind of comfort watching. Nothing Mm -hmm. to... I I didn't want to dig into anything too deep. I'm going to see Shang-Chi next week... Or Shang-Chi next weekend. Or this coming weekend, uh, rather. Uh, So I didn't really want to dig into anything too major. But I uh, rewatched an old Let's Play of uh, Detroit Become Human. Mm. The David Cage. Honestly, it's probably the best one of, of all the ones he did. I mean, it still controls like, it's like also, crud, but... It's also the most frustrating of the ones that he has done. I don't know. I think I like Heavy Rain better than Detroit. Heavy Heavy Rain, it's it's interesting. It's I think Detroit has a better, like, kernel of an idea, but the execution of it, it, like, trips at the 10-yard line to the point where it's frustrating... At least I I enjoy Heavy Rain's like stupid true crime mystery aesthetic it's got going for it. Did you know there was supposed to be a supernatural twist to it? Yeah, of course. There yeah, was. I mean, <laughs> yeah, most of his games have a weird supernatural twist. Well, this one was so bad they cut it at the last second and left like remnants of it into the into the, the video, final game <laughs> in the final game. So Ethan Mars, you know how he will kind of black out and show up in random places holding on to an origami thing. It's because when he was hit by a car trying to save his son, being hit by the car caused him to gain a psychic link to the origami killer. And so whenever the origami killer was out murdering people, he, Ethan Mars would psychically link up black out and wonder to a random alleyway Sewer in town filling with water or yeah whatever. <laughs> yeah as a yeah oh like, you mean like this like at the scene of the killings yeah oh okay yeah i never played heavy rain i mean Completely i have it, but I never as played it. a red herring hmm weirdly enough nanners was playing that today oh really yeah or is probably probably playing, playing, that playing it currently speak. yeah <laughs> yeah but uh detroit become human it is it is a very it's an interesting concept it's frustrating in that a game that basically asked the question, what if civil rights, but with robots instead, <laughs> uh, David Cage, the director, writer and head of Quantic Dream, the company that made it basically said, oh, no, this game is not about anything. I'm just asking questions. No, <laughs> there's no reason. To- no, it's not about c- civil rights. No, we have Martin Luther King quotes all over the place. The robots literally have to sit on the back of the bus. Back of the bus. 
It's like that heavy handed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's no meaning behind it. Uh, no. He's just okay. asking questions. It's like Ubisoft when they say, oh, the, these Far Cry games are not political, even though they're very political. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I like the idea. The game also has three different uh, narrative threads that you're following throughout the game. And I'll be honest, they could have cut two thirds of those out because the only one that really matters is the true crime section with connor with, with connor and connor and, uh, yeah. and mr krabs <laughs> yeah, that's that yeah i like that stuff actually yeah, yeah. that's the best part of, that is easily the yeah, best part like, of the game like kara or kara depending on who you're talking to in the game because they both they always <laughs> they pronounce say it her, both ways yeah. yeah i hate her parts of the game she's just too polite to correct anybody i hate yeah. i hate alice well here's the thing her her playthrough would have been fine if David Cage could have left well enough alone without putting in the third act twist. Oh yeah. That pretty much negates the entire it ruins her yeah. entire storyline. I'm going to, okay. So this game came out what, like three, four years yeah, ago. It's old enough. It, okay. So I'm going to spoil it. Yeah. One of the story arcs is a, uh, um, a maid bot basically that, um, through different actions throughout the game, you end up going on an adventure with a little girl. She's protecting this little girl. She's and they're trying to get across the border to Canada because Canada doesn't have regulations against robots. There are no robots up there, which, you know, I mean, there's I think no there, I think there are. They're just there just don't have any laws like like America had for them. or there's no manufacturing up there as well. So if they needed parts, mm. they would be stuck. But let's not think about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the whole thing is supposed to be it's this robot caregiver caring for a human girl and it's supposed to be developing like, like affection a bond and, and whatever and maternal instinct for her until you get to the third act twist where you find out oops a doops the little girl's a robot too and yeah. also kara or kara rather whatever uh has known about it the entire time and has just repressed chosen it. not to think about it she's repressed it she saw a, a newspaper clipping with an ad for child bot 9000 <laughs> That looks just like her. That looks just like this little girl that she's been caring for and decided to go, you know what? This is this is an in, this is information that my brain doesn't need. This is irrelevant, clearly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like the like the first time I played through, I was like, oh, OK. And then like other times I played through and I picked up on little nuances throughout the that act, like those storylines of the game. Like, it ruins it, especially like with the. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's like well, taking the interesting part of the story and surgically removing it. Also, on on replays, it makes all of the scenes in which uh, Alice, the little girl, is trying to be fed and constantly complaining that she's cold and constantly complaining that she's too wet or too tired. She's a robot. <laughs> she's running helplesschild.exe. <laughs> yeah, that's all. And it oh. and it's like. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Yeah. It treats the player oh, like yeah. an idiot. There's a part where like their car breaks down and, 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 and car is all like, oh, it's 30 degrees out. We got We got to get Alice inside. And I'm like thinking about it. I was like, at the time I was playing it, we were going through like a polar vortex and I'm like, 30 degrees sounds really good right about now. That don't sound so bad. <laughs> and also she's a, the girl's a robot. Yeah. She and, shouldn't be complaining at about one point, the weather. And at one point in one of the, in one of the diverging storylines or whatever, there's a part where you can turn off Alice's temperature sensor or whatever. And Although she's the not last player that I that I watched um, purposely left it on because she was so mad about the uh, <laughs> about the twist. She's oh, like, "No, we're gonna let that and, kid get, get and, cold." In saying like, you know, David Cage saying the game's not about nothing. Yet there's a whole sequence of a literal concentration game. Yeah, there's that as well. Yeah, depending on which choices. Yes. This game is a very very fancy choose your own adventure. Oh yes, yes. Uh, and there's a fat and there's a, a point in that in that game where you can abandon Alice. Oh, yeah. You can straight up abandon her. Yeah, you can. And it ruins the, it ruins her entire story. The scenes in the junkyard were really cool. Oh, yeah. Looking, yeah. Oh, cool that's looking. one of the best Ro <laughs> robot robot Dante's Inferno. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the best scenes. Uh, I also on uh, rewatching this uh, this player um, and I'm only rewatching it because I kind of want to play it, but I don't have a PlayStation and I haven't looked I think it's into it's on PC. It's on PC. It's on PC now. Yeah. I haven't looked that deep into it. I might pick it up. Um, honestly, I think it's on Steam. Yeah. Honestly, you can use my PlayStation Four if you want. Oh, okay. Because I'm not. Okay. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't stand North. Oh I yeah, North sucks. I can't stand the uh, the the revolutionary. So the one of the three storylines is this um, 
helper bot that becomes a revolutionary trying he, to he's he's robo jesus uh, he's martin luther king or malcolm x depending on how you take powers. him well he does also have superpowers yes that is that is also true but he has like a chorus of of different other robots that are telling him okay hey be be this way be one way you know we should run and hide we should try to be peaceful or we should fight or we, we should or blow we up should, detroit we should murder everyone and blow up detroit with a nuclear bomb which i did when i played it and I'm that's just like this, and that's north let's just blow is, up detroit yeah north sucks she she will not be happy unless unless you are murdering and eating humans <laughs> pretty much she's <laughs> she's bender i think i've yeah. said this before but the best part of the game is when the robot girl who is the menu, the main menu of the game, asks you if she can be free to leave and not be in the game anymore. And if you say yes, she will leave and never come back. Yeah, she but also they patched it back in where you start a new game and someone something will say, Hey, congratulations, you won a brand new Chloe bot. A brand new Scarlett Johansson robot. Yeah, pretty much. Like and, 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 oh, and yeah. a brand and new, like, totally wiped, totally clean robot. And she'll like and she'll judge your like judge your choices in the game mm -hmm. on that save or whatever. Yeah, I thought that was brilliant, but That's yeah, actually kinda, pretty smart. it kind of does kind of take the teeth out of it when they have a new one come back and Well, there's like one yeah. point where like uh one of the times Nicole was playing through it, because she loves that game. Alice and um and Kara died, and she's like, I, I can't believe you let them die. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you made her feel bad. <laughs> or there was like at one point I was playing, and I was playing like the complete like jerk, like all the mean decisions in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I was having like Connor just be a straight tool. Oh, I've I watched a Let's Play of it where um, it, th it was their gun through, where every time there is a decision in which a gun is on screen or... A, you're able to pick up a gun. They picked up or used the gun <laughs> and they chanted gun, 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 <laughs> gun every time it happened. And it's, it was hilarious. It made for a very interesting, very disjointed <laughs> playthrough. But, uh, yes. but yeah, during one of the plays, I was like being a jerk and like the menu bot asked me if we could be friends. And I said, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, I see. Well, if you don't mind, I want to reset myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's like robot suicide. <laughs> well, I mean, are you friends with your toaster? Yeah, it's true. Yep. That uh, sounds like a Battlestar <laughs> yeah. argument. Yeah. Did you know um, the guy who played Connor and the blue haired Tracy are married? Yeah, they're married and they have a Let's Play channel. And for the um, uh, anniversary of Detroit. They replayed Detroit oh. in cosplay as their characters. <laughs> so Connor and the and in the uh, escort bot and the escort. <laughs> yeah, uh, Amelia was wearing you yeah. know ac actual clothing, but yeah, they, yeah. she had the things. Yeah, they they both oh, had yeah. like you, the blue you can, glowing you can thing. Get the little, the... You can get the little cosplay. Oh. Yeah, uh, color circle dongle thing. Yeah. Also, but... Connor is a uh, vending machine in Cyberpunk. He also. is. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've seen a lot of uh, one uh, quest. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen a lot of like uh, fan art of a vending machine wearing the uh, Connor, the Connor jacket. <laughs> jacket and tie <laughs> saying he's the vending machine sent by Cyberlife. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, Connor, Connor and um, Hank and Hank are it's the best. They're the best parts of the whole game. Clancy Brown's performance as Hank is excellent. Oh, too. yeah. Phenomenal. Also, just the storyline as a whole is pretty good because like he's all like, you know, racist against robots well prejudice against robots he's, but he's he has a not, good reason he's for not it? prejudiced against he his son was killed by a robot by accident or yeah. his son was it's like those dalmatians that killed mortally mom ex yes exactly yeah kind of the the kid was what? uh mortally injured oh, and you, uh, a doctor bot wasn't able to save his son didn't, and he didn't held know against him. that happens yeah. in cruella her mom was killed by dalmatians i didn't watch cruella yeah. Oh yeah, it was that, super. Yeah that that's her that's her uh, motivation for uh, hating Dalmatians. Hating Dalmatians. See, I thought originally she just hated animals and would skin them for clothes. No, she has a dog in in Corella. Like, oh. there's a lot of dogs in that movie, which is fitting because it's a it's a prequel, <laughs> one hundred and one Dalmatians. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she has a dog, and her like henchmen have dogs. No, oh. did you know that the 
book sequel to 101 Dalmatians, the like the original like old timey uh, sequel book. Uh, has to do with like dog alien, psychic dog aliens. Oh yeah, and, I read about that. And yeah. all yeah. all the humans in England disappear. Yeah, and, and they have and, like a dog government. Yeah, and some dogs go to dog Mars so they they could have space dogs. Yeah, and there's like a whole like dog prime minister of England and all kinds. Where's of... Where's that Disney movie? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like they could talk to each other. Yeah, like, one hundred and one dog parliament. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, kind of reminds me of, like the rescuers with like uh all the animal like all the mice like dignitaries. Oh yeah, yeah. Or um uh, the great mouse detective with like the mouse queen and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the great mouse detective. That is like probably one of my favorite Disney. I movies. need to rewatch that. I think I've only watched it once as a kid. Yeah, and same. I don't remember enough about it to really. I mean, Vincent Price is the big rat villain. Right. Yeah, I remember that, and that's Rat-tigan. recent enough to Rat-tigan, go back. Yeah. And watch it, but uh, I just don't have enough memory of it. Unfortunately, I love, I love that movie. It's great. I, Check it out. Yeah. yeah, I read a book over the summer that I've been meaning to talk about, but I keep forgetting. Yeah, let's hear it. I, I read Masters of Doom, which is like a, a autobiography. Well, not really autobiography, but it's about the the rise and fall, not fall, the rise of id Software and the creation of Doom. Oh, and interesting. Commander oh, Keen. You and, said Doom. I thought you said Dune. No, I said Doom. Okay, interesting. So it's about uh, John Carmack and, and uh, uh, Rome- John, John Romero, Romero. The, the two Johns, mm-hmm. and their their rise to power and subsequent split. And yeah. funny that we were talking about a game with uh, robots, uh, robots pretending to be human, and Carmack is a human who pretending to be is, a robot. Is a ro- he's, he's pretty a, much a robot. He is a robot pretending to be human. Yeah, or badly. some sort of advanced human. I'm not mm-hmm. sure which. But it's a really interesting book and really goes back to the like the entire formation of id software and how they how they came on the upon the scrolling like technology that let him make Commander Keen and like just really blew everybody out of the water. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just really interesting to learn like the backstory there and the where everybody fit in in the company and that kind of stuff. Like hmm. like the the duality between the two Johns is interesting because. Karamak is very much the tech guy and the brains behind the the uh stuff the the uh engine yeah the like... engine he's the engine guy and he made the stuff that made their games revolutionary but Romero is was the actual like gamer guy who the design guy who would make the games like fun oh uh, yeah <laughs> so, and the, so I can the... see Carmack being like this is a game that's very clinical yeah like they had to fight him to put the the uh, secret walls in Wolfenstein, where you, if you tap on the walls, they'll, they'll scroll out of the way mm. to find secret areas. They had to fight him for that because they're like the game will be more fun if you get to look for secrets. That's what people like to do in games. That's what people do in Mario Brothers, right? And they they had to fight him for it until he finally relented and put it in the engine. Oh, jeez! And it's just full of interesting stuff like that and how different the two Johns are, but without them together, it's just not the same. And both of them kind of go downhill from there. Like they never reach that doom height again. Right. Because they, yeah. They have that falling out. Do hmm. they get into Daikatana yes. at all? Yes. Yeah, they do. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. The, the whole mess that is Daikatana and how big mis- sword Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with great character names like Usagi Miyamoto. <laughs> I thought it was Hiro Miyamoto. Oh yeah, that's the main character, but yeah. the the person who made the Daikatana is literally named Usagi Miyamoto. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Who's a who's who's a favorite who's who's a famous swordsman? Uh Miyamoto. All right, that's the name for everyone. Yeah. Well, they're the same family. It's a it's a oh. lineage. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I know too much about Daikatana's lore. <laughs> So yeah. you have you have the hero of the game, hero, hero. Yeah. and then you have the guy who made the sword, rabbit, yes, <laughs> Sailor Moon, yeah, right, <laughs> Sailor Samurai. <laughs> Actually, I saw some fan art of the samurai or of the Sailor Scouts wearing samurai armor, and I was pretty about it. <laughs> oh, nice. But the the reason why that kept getting delayed is because they kept switching to whatever the latest engine that right. Karamak was doing 
because they weren't on the same page anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's really, it's really kind of sad that they that it didn't work out between them. And Romero like was constantly playing games instead of making games a lot too. Oh, really? <laughs> he got really into deathmatch. He kind of was like really getting high on his own supply situation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. But it was a really good book, uh, really well written and really just, I, I poured through it in like three days. Really interesting. Oh, yeah, I might have to check that out. That's uh, sounds really good. Yeah, it's called Masters of Doom, and I forget who wrote it. <laughs> I'm going to look that up because that seems like an important thing to know. Okay. <laughs> I watched through the first five episodes of the He-Man oh. Revelation. Yeah, what'd you think? Not bad. Um, gets dark at the end. <laughs> mm. David Kushner wrote Masters of Doom. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, it's pretty good. It's animated really well. Um, <laughs> some of like the flashbacks of like Tila telling like old stories of like hanging out with He Man and fighting Skeletor, you know, years ago kind of thing. It's kind of funny because like they'll play off like these really awful puns. Oh, excellent. Yeah, like, I like the old show. <laughs> yeah, like the old show. Oh, good. And there's like a or like there's one, one episode where they're like uh, flashbacking to like them being on this boat and getting jumped by Merman and Skeletor, and uh, <laughs> when He Man like jumps out of the water and you know saves the day, whatever, and like he like looks at Skeletor and they're like, "Looks like your plans are all wet, Skeletor," <laughs> and and the uh, Tila's current companion, I can't remember her name now, but she's like this techno engineering whiz, and she goes. Did he really say that? She's like, yeah, you had a really good sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great show, though. I, I really loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. And it really, like, kind of shows some of the, like, the old He-Man lore. Like, the whole splitting of the sword thing was actually a, an original thing from the mini comic that came with the first figures. But back right. before there was a show. Before there was a show, there was, there was no, like, show lore. It was yeah. just... Figure lore. stuff out, yeah, yeah. stuff that was on the back of the the blister pack. Yeah, that came with like pretty little, much. Like, yeah. like, little, there was like a little comic, mm-hmm. and like the whole thing was like Skeletor had one half of the sword, and He Man had the other half of the sword, and when you combined them, it turned into this you know magical MacGuffin kind of thing, right? Rather than when the show came out, well, the sword was the, just the power itself, right? But no, it's it was really neat. Um, it was kind of cool seeing some of these. Um, like you see a character go, oh wait, I remember that character. When they have like the flashback or whatever to like the events leading up to the current events of the show, like you see like Fisto and stuff like that, like running across the battlefield, and I was like, "Oh man, excellent!" And there's one point they run into Stinkor, the skunk guy. Oh, isn't that uh, Jason Muse? Yeah, he's voiced by Muse. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like I was watching it with Nicole, and I'm like, "Oh man, that toy literally, truly did stink. It, <laughs> like it physically smelled bad." I love the re- <laughs> the joke about Moss Man too when Skeletor goes. Smells like pine. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, when he kills Moss Man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, it, it's kind of weird, though. Like, but there's not enough He-Man in it. This show's called He-Man, even though it's not called He-Man. <laughs> called Masters yeah. of the Universe. <laughs> and also, He-Man appears in almost every episode. In a it's, flashback. Yeah, it's a flashback, but he's there. <laughs> he's still important to the story. <laughs> And like as much as I love like Mark Hamill as like a voice actor, it's really hard to like watch his Skeletor and like not see the Joker. Yeah, and just not hear Joker. Yeah, it's not the it's not ideal. Like he doesn't change it enough. Mm, I see. Um, yeah. he does. There's like at one point like in the last episode where it comes off super Jokery. Like he calls Evil Lynn like Linny, mm. and I'm like, <sighs> and it is like it just sounded like he was talking to Harley Quinn. Honestly, I mean, and every character in the show is pr- pretty good. Um, they give like everybody something to do. Oh, yeah. Like, everybody kind of has agency and you literally do feel for everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. Like Orko is probably some of the saddest stuff. Oh, yeah. And like, Griffin Newman is a fantastic Orko. He does a very good job. Yeah. And it's like and like like his character development and his growth in like the episode and a half that he's in or whatever. It was like, ooh, yeah. It was just very good. It makes me very excited for the next set, for it's, the, the part two or whatever they're it's doing. It's way better than I expected any kind of He-Man show to be. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Like, le- it's legitimately good. The original show was is like a corny good time. 
this is a legitimately good show. <laughs> like the whole story and like cutting in like the campiness of like the 80s stuff, but then with like the with some serious emotion at times. Mm-hmm. Like um, there's like a whole point when like King Randor finds out that He-Man is gone and he finds out who He-Man was and like he just flips out and I'm like, oh, I, I think if you enjoyed something like a Castlevania. Oh, then, yeah. Then this might be worth checking out. Even okay. If, even if you have no prior like attachment to the franchise, it's that good. Okay. Also, the fact um, it is animated by the same studio that did Castlevania. And it's not as it's I mean, I, ca- I can't say that it's not gory per se, because I mean, there is some blood and stuff. Oh, but it's super like I'd let it. It's, yeah, it. it's not it's not like Castlevania where it oh, was God, just no. literal yeah. gore. You know, Castlevania is nasty. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I loved Castlevania, but it mm-hmm. does get gross. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and take a break here. And when we come back, we'll get into some of this news. Nerd Overload is sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes. MB Subculture is the one-stop shop for all your geeky needs, from comics and collectibles to unique custom costumes, masks, makeup, and more. MB Subculture is located at 122 West Rensselaer Street in downtown Bucyrus, 567-806-5364, and online at subcultureoh.com. This is Gail Martin. Hi, this is Carol Kelly. We'd like to invite you to join us for our gardening and outdoors show here on WZMO. We talk about observations and insights about what's happening from week to week with plants and animals in the woods and fields around us, as well as what's going on in the garden. In the Green Outdoors airs Saturdays and Mondays at about 9.30 a.m. right after the second cup. We hope you'll join us. Hey, everybody, we're back and we're ready to tackle all the hottest news of today. And the masters of the universe. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You know, sometimes I think you put an echo effect in there, and I think it's just the fact that I tilted my head back when I did that. Yeah. It kind of does it. Oh, yeah. No, there's both. I oh. put a little bit of an echo in there. <laughs> oh, okay. Just a, just a touch, you know. Just a little seasoned it with just a little, little just a little just a little, mm, just a little extra to it. Yes. Mwah. So uh Chef's kiss. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some of this news. Um so the first thing we kind of hinted at it with our intro this week, but there is a new trailer for the fourth Matrix movie, ma- the Matrix Revelations. I'm, Resurrections. I'm trackball. This is my friend Email and his brother Thumb Drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm zip drive. Yeah, I zip disks. Yes. <laughs> That's about the right time period for the uh-huh. Matrix, I think. Yep. And I'm new to the crew. External hard drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is my new cousin, Solid State. <laughs> <laughs> He's really fast. He's going to jack into the jazz drive. <laughs> <laughs> With my fire wire. <laughs> <laughs> this is my girlfriend, Ethernet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matrix jokes. She, she can crack into the Matrix at 14.4 kilobytes per second. <laughs> you know, going back and like, wa- like I watched the original Matrix, I don't know, about a year or two ago. It holds Me up. Too. Yeah. It does hold up, but it also doesn't hold up <laughs> because everything just looks horribly dated. You know? Oh, no, I'm like, that still looks so cool. It's super- oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 cool. no, 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 no. Effects and graphics, yes. No, I mean I'm- like their outfits. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was still like, oh, that's a sweet jacket. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, 12 year old you could yeah. still get with it. <laughs> no, I'm more meant like, you know, like seeing like Neo's like, Hacker hub with all these little <laughs> oh, floppy yes. discs. Oh, yes. yeah. And those, okay. big, and those like sliding flip flow fl- or uh, cell phones. His monitors, his giant CRT <laughs> monitors. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually funny. About six months or so ago, I was a guest on the Teach a Dummy podcast, yeah, yeah. and they did a version of the No, I Haven't Seen That premise. Uh, their other host, Tim, who is uh, a couple years younger than us, he's my, I think he's like 30 or something like that, had never seen The Matrix. Oh. So we basically, BJ and I forced him to sit down forced and watch him. The Matrix for the first time. Holding his eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> at, at points, yes, actually. Yeah. 
And uh, we had a full discussion about the Matrix and everything over there. And it's uh, it was a lot of fun. That was the last time I had watched the Matrix. And uh, I don't know. It still holds up. It's fine. Oh, no. I love the Matrix. Like when the movie first came out, I was like, man, this is fantastic. Probably one of the best things of like science fiction media I've consumed in a long time. Loved and it. It was at the time. It, it was. was. The best thing. And then it got beat over the head between references in other movies and their own sequels. <laughs> yeah. The references and other things, that was the big one. The the bullet time thing. Yep, that and Scary Movie and Shrek, I they all did it. I didn't realize it till I read it today, but the two sequels came out in the same year. They did. That's insane. Oh, they, they filmed they, they filmed did. them concurrently. Yeah, yes. they did. They were like that was like one of the first movies they did that with. Yeah. Yeah. Um so anyway, the fourth Matrix movie, I messed up the yes. tagline on it. What is it actually called? Resurrections. Matrix Four Resurrections. Okay. Um what happens in this trailer? Well, you've got is it Neo? Is Neo there? It's well, they John Wick. Yeah. He does yeah, look, like John, like, John he look like John Wick. He does look like John Wick. It's long haired, bearded Keanu. And they're still they're still calling him Thomas, because that was his non That's his dead name. That's his mm-hmm. dead name was Thomas Anderson. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. God, I love that movie. That scene really messes me up too. The whole interrogation scene in the first oh, movie. Oh yeah. Some Jack, body horror stuff. Jack, it's so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and those and those glasses. Sunglasses. It's so awesome. <laughs> Flip phones. <Yeah>. Edgy. <laughs> anyway. Um I, yeah, I don't think the escape mechanic in the Matrix would work now because there aren't pay phones anymore. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I'd be I'm curious oh, to see broken. what they do. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. another broken one. <laughs> Or like, there's no landlines because almost nobody has a landline yeah. anymore. Uh huh. Anyway, um, yeah, they have to come up with like something is you. It's Wi-Fi. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. all Wi-Fi. Yeah, go to the router. <laughs> yep. Go to the router, Neo. Stick your finger into the Ethernet plug. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the modem. You want the router? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta call tech support. <laughs> I need a Spectrum associate. Uh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, so Neo, reboot the router and you can get out of the matrix. You give it a couple seconds. Yeah. I'll plug it for 30 seconds, plug it back in, wait for the green lights to come on. <laughs> you can do it, Neo. <laughs> Use your kung fu to unplug the matrix. Plug it back in. <laughs> Any, oh, man, we could probably riff on this all day. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So he's seeing a therapist. This This version of himself is seeing a therapist. And he is apparently having dreams of the events of the past Matrix movies. And he thinks he's going crazy. And now, I, I'm going to be honest. It's been a long time since I watched the third Matrix movie. I have never seen it. Um, there's a lot of things I kind of remember and don't remember. Like, because uh, uh, Carrie Moss comes back as Trinity. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure she died. Like her character died. I don't remember. I yeah, I don't. Legit- yeah, yeah. she got stabbed in the chest. Yeah. I felt so burnt by the second one that I'm like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. There's like, I mean, there's like the whole like you know messiah Im- imagery and whatnot and they allegory. They kind of went heavy with that. In the third one, they go super heavy with it. There's yeah. like a whole point where like Neo is blind, his eyes have been burned out, um, and he goes to like the central hub of the machines or whatever, and it's a very like crucifixion imagery kind of thing. Mm. And you do kind of see some of that stuff in this trailer, like in quick, like like really fast flashes. They ran out of anime to steal things from, and they didn't know what to do with the rest of the, the which is trilogy. Funny, <laughs> which is funny, because there's the whole Animatrix. Yeah. The, the, the main thrust of this trailer looks like, from the way, from where I'm sitting, it looks like Neo and Trinity were plugged back into the Matrix somehow. Or at least, like or they at least are, Neo is, and Trinity is maybe a construct. It's, Maybe, hard, it's hard to say. Who, it's yeah, really hard it's hard to, to say, say. But they don't. They don't seem like they know each other, and they don't seem like they know that the Matrix is, is a thing. Is a ar- artificial reality world. It seems like they've been plugged back in somehow. And uh, the medication that uh, Neil Patrick Harris, Neil Patrick Harris, has been prescribing to Neo is the blue pills. Is identical to the blue pill that uh, Morpheus, Morpheus gave him in the first film. Yeah, or offered him in the first film. Right, and there's like also the whole uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland stretch, which was which is a mirror from the first movie, oh, and chasing right. the white rabbit, and, and all they that. play that song, uh, that Jefferson Airplane song that is way overdone in these situations. Yep, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, hit, hit you right over the head with uh, uh, white rabbit. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially with the fact you see a girl with the tattoo of the white rabbit, mm-hmm. just like in the first film. 
And it seems like that character has a lot more to do in this movie. And I don't think she's the being, same character, though. It's a different character, but the same premise, the same premise. But that char- the character in this movie that has the white rabbit tattoo has more to do. Yes. Um, and there's like that whole, you know, imagery of the Alice in Wonderland book and yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. Now, there is something that was interesting that I didn't know. Uh, I didn't notice until subsequent viewings. Apparently, in the third Matrix movie, there is a little Indian girl that is a minor character like the next Neo or something. I think she was the possibility of being the next one. Something like that. Because the, the Oracle had a whole bunch of them. Right. But there was a little a little Indian girl that was that. And the same actress is back as an adult Older version in this. And she pops up in a couple times in the trailer looking like she works for the resistance. Mm hmm. So that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, agents are back. You know, you see them doing their whole, you know, dodging bullets kind of thing. Yeah, morphing in from somebody else into the agent. Type yeah, of a thing. little body horror stuff. Yeah. That's fine. I got uh, a got a young Morpheus, maybe. Maybe it has to be. I mean, I don't know. There's I the saw a black guy. He's got to be. He got, looks like a young Lawrence Fishburne. He looks like Cowboy Curtis. <laughs> he I does mean, look like Cowboy Curtis. He doesn't though, have the cherry curls, but otherwise. <laughs> though I did see uh, there were some articles online talking about how like the Matrix online might explain why actual Morpheus isn't back. Oh, I yeah. didn't read those. Yeah, because he dies like every every year as a server wide event. <laughs> No, there was they built legitimate like Matrix lore into that game. The mm-hmm. Wachowskis were worked with the designers of that game. Yeah. So there's canon stuff that happens in that game you can't play anymore. Also the fact that only uh only Lana came back uh to do this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her sister didn't want to come back and do it. She wanted to like, you know, she wants to I, like I read Cloud an, Atlas too. Well, was she? She. I read an interview with her about, it and they were asking her about why she didn't want to work with uh, or do the Matrix Four, and she goes, "That was a different time in my life. I don't hate it. I just don't want to go back and you know go back to that time. Seems in my like life. retreading. Yes. Yeah. And then, and I, and Fair enough. Yeah, and I, that's fine. Yeah, I personally would like to see them do more in the Jupiter Ascending universe because that movie was stupid, <laughs> and I want to see more stupid things. <laughs> They had a gun that went bark, bark. Yeah. <laughs> I've still not ever seen that movie. You need to. You need to. You it's, keep saying that every time it gets brought up. It's the dumbest. It's the dumbest and the best. <laughs> also, they did Speed Racer, and that movie is amazing. Oh, it's a banger. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a great movie. It's legitimately an awesome movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and you obviously have, like, you know, some touchstones from the original film, and they're like, there's the kung fu scene. There's the whole, like, Neo stopping bullets thing. Yeah, the little dojo where he learns... Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Yeah. But it feels like maybe he doesn't learn things. Maybe he just maybe starts remembers, to... Remembers. Unlocks yeah, them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Remembers, you know, his godlike power he had before. <laughs> Which, that brings me to the point, the fact that I hated the other two Matrix trilogy, or the other two Matrix sequels. It's the like, first Matrix movie ends. There is a definite It's a definite ending. ending. Yeah. It really doesn't leave really room for sequels. It didn't need to go any further, but they decided to do go ahead and do it anyway. For money. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> the way I'm kind of likening this a little bit is like, you know how when you play a video game and you get to like level nine, like an RPG or something, and you get to level 99 and you unlock all the special abilities and do everything. And then they do a sequel to the game and they have to do a, some hand wavy yeah, excuse. Samus as doesn't to why have you, the power bomb anymore. It's Samus doesn't have the power <laughs> bomb anymore. It's it's Sora uh, got all uh, jellied up in his jam and had to go back to yeah. level one. And had to relearn how to how to shoot fireballs. It's like this is a Neo on New Game Plus. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's New Game New Game Plus Neo. Yeah, the enemies are harder, and you don't have your abilities. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. The Matrix New Game Plus. I like it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm interested enough to watch it. Oh, I'll see it. I'll go oh, see yeah, it. I, I mean, I'll, see I'm it. probably oh, yeah. I'm probably gonna I'll probably burn through the sequels again. And yeah, I'll probably actually watch the third one. I'll do that to yeah. myself. <laughs> Uh, All right, see. so uh, along trailers. with that, there was another trailer for something. There were two. Two, two yes. Two trailers. Two trailers. Talk about them. So Paramount Plus it, uh, had two trailers today. Yeah, today. Yeah. Um, for two new, uh, well, one new Star Trek show and one next season of a Star Trek show. Right. So they had a trailer for season two of Picard. And a show that probably should have ended after season one. <laughs> I did not watch it. I, I wanted to watch not, it. Yeah. You didn't uh, miss much. Well, my big thing is I didn't have uh, CBS 
all access all access and now it's just all just paramount plus and i'm like do i really need another streaming service just- yeah here's the thing you don't need it no. yeah wink yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um and the whole caveat with this because i don't like i said i don't know how the first season went of picard but basically in this one um q pops back up john delancey comes back and re- reprises his role as q you know trickster space god <laughs> Yeah. Q from Next Generation yeah. and one other. of the best characters in oh, Next yeah. Gen. Oh, yeah. And then he also comes back in Deep Space Nine and oh, Voyager. Sure. He comes back with Vash, doesn't he? In, in the one stampede? episode of. What? Mm-hmm. Is it Vash the Vash stampede? The stampede, yes. No, the. Uh, from the 60 the... billion double dollar man? <laughs> That's an anime reference. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, Vash was from the uh, Captain's Holiday episode where the, he goes to the Pleasure Planet. Picard does after oh, the uh, right, right, after right. the uh, the Borg thing. Yeah, it, it gets into a, a one episode, a one off episode, like a treasure hunting uh, thing with a sexy lady treasure hunter, and she comes back later on, uh, basically shacking up with Q. I don't remember that at all. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I remember, I remember Cisco punching Q in the face in a boxing match. <laughs> Good. And Q going, "You hit me." Picard never hit me, and Cisco says, "I'm not Picard." <laughs> And then in Voyager, he hits on Captain Janeway to try to get her to make his Q baby. Okay. Yeah. Q's weird. Q is is Loki. Yeah. Q yeah. Q is Star Trek Loki. Yeah. He is he is he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. And he comes from the Q consortium because there are a mil- a bunch of Qs. Yeah. But this one's the one that likes to screw around with stuff. Yeah. The other ones don't want to interfere. Like they got like that whole watcher. He's, syndrome he's thing. He's the bat mite of yes, Star Trek. He is. He's the Mr. Mixel Pidlick. Yeah. He is a trickster. He loves just basically just because he's bored. He's yeah. bored with being all powerful. So he just likes to mess with mortals. I just said bat mite because it was the easier of the two to pronounce. Uh, yeah. <laughs> having trouble with a Mr. Mixel Pidlick? Mm-hmm. Stop it. I hate it. Aha. Uh-huh. Anyway. <laughs> Oh man, now just make me think of Batman Brand the Bold. One of my favorite uh Star Trek uh, next gen episodes is the one where Q is stripped of his powers and has to live as a, a person day as a human on the on the Enterprise. And he absolutely hates it. And he hates it. He yep. hates being human so much. Yeah. And so does Picard because he's like, This guy, he sucks so bad. And he's like whining <laughs> all the time. Just get him off my shit. He's like that's just what, follow him well, around. That's the one uh where the uh Picard meme of sitting in the chair with his hand on his face. And the face palm. Yeah. The face palm Picard though, theme comes from. Though there are a bunch of Picard face palms in, in Next Gen. And they usually come from uh, Q episodes. <laughs> because or, Picard or, is very serious and Q is very not. Or or episodes where Picard has to has to deal with children. Well, he yeah, he, like children. he does hate children with a passion. <laughs> like the whole Picard day. Oh, yeah. Sh- shut up, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> so... And basically, Q goes back in time. I don't know why, but to mess with human history and turns the Federation into a fascist dictatorship or something. It looks a little bit like the Mirror Universe. A stuff. little, yeah. The uh, uh, instead of the Federation, they're the what are they? The, the Terran um, Empire. Terran Empire. Yeah. Don't know. I don't know. I didn't. See, I didn't see any symbols that I recognized as the Terran Empire. I don't well, know. Picard gonna... didn't have a tiny mustache or goatee. And that's the, usually a sign that I mean, there's an in, evil, evil The twin. writers don't know what that is. Well, that's true. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> probably a, what there, it is. There's a comic. There's a comic called uh, Broken Glass or something. Not, oh, Shattered Glass or Shattered, something. Yeah, yeah something. And, I, I'm and saying the writers of Picard aren't don't know Star Trek well enough well, to know yeah, that. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing. So there's that. But And then he goes back in time using the Borg Queen, because she pops up, and also Seven of Nines there, and she... When they when the timeline gets changed, um, she loses her Borg components. Oh, nice! So she she's fully human. Yeah. So I guess like somehow in the events of changing things, she never got abducted by the Borg when she was a kid. Anyway, that's cool. it'll be interesting. And what uh, if? Yes, Star Trek. Get, what if? Yeah, Star Trek. Basically, what if. yeah. Uh, and so then the other trailer was for a new Star Trek series, which is a spinoff of Star Trek Discovery, uh, called Strange. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> Man, you are really awful on new Star Trek lately. <laughs> Well, if, well, if new Star Trek wasn't awful, <laughs> see, I don't know. I haven't watched it. I can't make that. I can't make that in my mind. Enterprise is still the worst Star Trek. So anyway. Well, <laughs> Enterprise is middling at best, right? As of, <laughs> as of right now, the biggest problem with new Star Trek is you have writers that fundamentally don't understand that Star Trek was more of a cerebral 
and at times more of a horror yeah. ty- type and show than an action bang bang shoot 'em up explosion yeah, show. And the suits want Star Wars. Suits want Star Wars, but with Star Trek, Star names. Trek names attached to them. Yeah. But yeah, things I mean, don't that, need that's that how many I felt ex- about that's how I felt about the Abrams Star Trek movies. And that's what they're looking at and kind of aping off of ah. is this is the Abrams stuff. Anyway. Anyway. So uh, it's called Strange New Worlds and it is the Again, another iteration of the inaugural run of the Enterprise uh, with Captain Pike from the pilot episode of Star Trek, also one of the main characters from Discovery, captaining the Enterprise. And then you have a bunch of new actors, a couple playing existing characters from old Star Trek. Some of them are very deep cuts. Yeah. Um, like Nurse Chapel and uh, well, Nurse Chapel wasn't as deep a cut. She was pretty prominent. Yeah, on, for a while. Yeah, they uh, tried TOS. to push her as a love interest for. Bones for a little for bit. Bones for Spock. Um, yeah, those two primarily. And then uh Doctor Um uh Well, number one uh is uh was originally played by Marjel Barrett and she is That was Gene Rumberry's wife, right? Yes. Yes. Uh also she played Nurse Chapel. Oh, did she? <laughs> yeah. And okay. she was also the voice of the computer, computer all the way up until her death. Yes. But I uh, that. Rebecca Romaine is playing uh number one, which I it just sparked a memory. Uh, she played number one in a scene or two of Discovery when Pike came over to the huh. s- Discovery. So she's ar- she was kind of already set in that role. Okay. But she was more of a cameo yeah. for that one episode. Okay. And is being brought on as a because her cast. character Because her character was more shown in the original pilot with Captain Pike. Yes. Um, they need to bring in Yeoman Rand with her... Uh, beehive? Beehive. Yeah, her basket weave beehive hair. Maybe that'll be like an end of the season or end of the series kind of thing when they're introducing Kirk or whatever. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, then you've got, of course, you know, you got a, a doctor. Um, what was his name? Strange. Uh, no. Nagoya or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no. Mm, starts with an M. Mbaga? Yeah. Um, I think that's I keep it. thinking Mbatu, but that's that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, Black, that's Black, Black Panther. Panther. That's Black Panther. That's, that's the gorilla chieftain. Yeah. But it's also best, one of the best characters in that movie. It's something yeah. similar to that. Yes, yes. Off the top of my head. Which is another deep cut from old Star Trek. Mm-hmm. We haven't talked What If yet. Have you guys watched any of it? No. I haven't watched any of it yet. I, I'm caught up on it. It's okay. Like I, I've heard the, the Marvel Zombies is the best episode. It was pretty good. Of the that was that's the thing. Part. I hate Marvel Zombies. It was one of my least favorite comic stories. It, they do a pretty good job with it here. There was the Doctor Strange focused one that was a week before, and I hated it. Oh, really? Was that was the the dark, uh, dark, dark Strange or whatever? Yeah, it's basically it's a different universe where instead of his hands getting messed up in the wreck, Christine dies, and that's oh. the whole episode is him trying to change that. But it's a it's a universal constant, so he can't. Oh, and gotcha. It's just kind of a bummer. And doesn't as Doctor it... Who would say, it's a fixed point in time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, weird. All right, well, hey, listen, I hate to cut you off with the Star Treks because I love talking about the Star Treks, but we, we have, need to talk about this. Other stuff. We have about five minutes to go and we have a bunch of PlayStation news to yeah. go over. Yeah. So th- let's let's rattle through them. There was a big PlayStation uh, press conference thing, stream thingy today mm-hmm. and they revealed a lot of games. They revealed they're doing a remaster of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Only on PlayStation. Mind you, these are all only on PlayStation 5. Yeah. At least for the time being. So no one's going to be able to play them. <laughs> I am. Well, you will, I but am. everyone else will not be able to play them. Uh, sure. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is like one of the most well-loved Star Wars games it's ever. Our, our, yeah, ever. It's RPG by BioWare. It's very good. The first one That's anyway. I hear, yeah. The yeah. first one anyway. But it was very good, um, and they still make references to it to this day. Yeah. I, I'll be excited to play it in a more accessible format. Yes. Because it's a little, it's a feels a little dated when it's you little, play it now. It's a little uh, crusty right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like 2003 when that game oh, came yeah. out. Yeah. Um, uh, God of War Ragnarok, the sequel to uh, the God of War on PlayStation 4. It's the one with the angry dad and the yeah, boy. Yes, angry dad, angry dad and child. Yeah. Uh, it looks like more of that. Yep. Yeah. Um, looked like some, some of the same locales that are, that are, they look different though. Cause everything is like an eternal winter, which is a deep cut for Norse mythology kind of thing. And that, now Kratos has a man's head on his, he did his, in the first game. He did in the first game. Yeah. I forgot completely. Yeah. About when that. you find, when you find, uh, Mir Mir. Yeah. Huh. I completely blanked on that ever happening. Yep. But it really reminds me of, uh, lollipop chainsaw. <laughs> 
with your boyfriend's head on your hip. She has her boyfriend's head uh, attached to her hip at all times. Yeah. That game is that game is something else. Yeah. James Gunn wrote that game. James Gunn. Yeah. Well, he he wrote this. He punched up the script from what Suda came out with, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, There was a Wolverine game announcement, and it was just a little trailer where he's like in a bar and he makes his. You know, kind of like come out. he does kinda, the claw thing. Kind of like uh, you know, uh, the first X Men movie. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't realize how bad I wanted a Wolverine game, but this sounds pretty rad. I mean, as long as it's better than that one Wolverine game, the Wolverine Origins game Adam that came Antio- out. Oh, that was pretty bad. I thought you were talking about Adamantium Rage for the Super oh, Nintendo. Oh, jeez, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Um, the Wolverine game. I mean, there's being done by the same guys that did the Spider Man. Yeah, it's, it's Insomniac. Insomniac. It's, it's, we're gonna talk about the other Spider Man here in just a second. I'm curious to see what they do differently with Wolverine than they do with Spider-Man. I know they're going to try to copy a lot of the same things from Spider-Man over, but um, Wolverine does not have the same type of movement. No, he has. He doesn't have like fancy traversal. He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the the agility. He doesn't have the yeah. He just doesn't have the movement. He's a little ball of rage. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what kind of play style they they have to adjust with that to, to fast travel you meet up with the uh beasts and he throws you across the or map. colossus or colossus, colossus yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> he fastball specials yeah. across the map that would be kind of <laughs> all right that would be kind of great makes me wonder if you're like because i feel like a lot of stuff with like wolverine really shines when he fights like bigger enemies so like maybe like sentinels and stuff like that yeah it'll be cool to oh, see cool. like other x-men too that we haven't seen in forever <laughs> right right well, fast travel is just nightcrawler Teleporting yeah. you across the screen, he or hugs, something. He hugs him and like, yeah, yeah. bam. <laughs> Not a lot to go off of the trailer. I mean, I'm interested. We'll oh, see. I'd like goes. to see where it goes. Sure. Uh, Spider Man Two, which is Spider Man Three. <laughs> yeah, it's technically yeah. Spider Man. Spider Man Two, the third Spider Man movie <laughs> or game. <laughs> to be fair, the Miles Morales game felt like it should have been. Well, a I DLC. never played it, but it looked like it should have been DLC for Spider Man. I didn't play Miles Morales, but I played the first yeah. Spider-Man, and that game is fantastic. I've been meaning to get Miles Morales. I've I've got the PlayStation Five for it. I probably should <laughs> at some point make the jump to pay for the seventy dollar game. <laughs> There's not a lot going on. There's a whole lot of voiceover. They and- got that symbiote. Yeah, yep. Venom's there. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Ven- Venom comes out of a ho- comes out of an alley, doing the whole wee. I forget what else he says. You but know they got that symbiote. Of course. I mean, there's a there's a small reference to it in the first Spider-Man game. I'm part of the collectible string of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> with it, all the references they they like just slam jammed that oh, game yeah. full of. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's uh this Ghostwire stuff? Ghostwire Tokyo is a horror game um, by Tango GameWorks. That's and- the one where the uh, people disappear, right? In I, Tokyo, yeah, and there's a lot of spooky ghosts, and that, you're and you're like a, a modern like s- urban ninja kind of kind of guy, like sorta. a first person magic slinging spooky game, spook 'em up, I guess. Yeah, and the trailer was cool. A lot of uh, spooky monsters with weird heads and missing heads, and I remember the first trailer from that uh, E3 a few years ago with Akumi Nakamura, everyone's favorite, everyone's E3 favorite presenter of all time. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is spooky. It's spooky. I mean, it just sounds like you know <laughs> Japanese folk- folklore. Because if you look at yeah. Japanese folklore, yeah. all the monsters are ugly and yeah, terrible it, in a modern setting. Yes. yes. So yeah, it looks cool. I'm I'm down for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was this Project Eve game, which was one of the very few like original <laughs> things we hadn't seen before. Oh yeah, and it just looked like a knockoff of Near Automata. Oh, like. A lot. Oh, really? Play is a lady with a big shiny butt jumping around, <laughs> hitting monsters, and there's a robot floating over her shoulder. And it's it's made by a company called I think it was like Shift Up Games or something. And I'm like, I've never heard of these people. Why does this have like a huge showing in the middle of a PlayStation event? And I looked it up, and it's like a Chinese company that made a couple phone games. Oh, like that, that. So they gave Sony a whole bunch of money. Yeah. It's they made that Destiny Child game oh, that I've seen gosh, advertised. Yes, yes, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm like, is this Chinese near Automata? And then I looked up it's, info yeah. on it. And I'm like, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's the Genshin Impact of near oh, Automata. Yeah. All right. You what's... say that, and you watch. You know, she'll pop up. 
in in Genshin Impact. Yeah. Okay, we're running out of time, but what's this last thing with the Tiny Tina Wonder oh. Wasteland thing? What is it, this? It was a trailer for her game coming out where it's, you're basically playing through that one DLC they had where it's a D&D fantasy universe. Set in Borderlands. Yeah, it's, oh, okay. it's, it's a Borderlands game, but the, yeah, the conceit is it's Tiny Tina's D&D campaign. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds fun. Yeah. I, if I could stomach any games by Gearbox, I would play it. Yeah. No, that sounds about right. I'm so torn because I like the character of Tiny Tina and I like Ashley Birch and her voice acting mm. and, it's, and she's doing a good job in the trailer. And also, it uses Baby Metal's Gimme Chocolate <laughs> in the background, good. which is good. Yeah. But, like, I just can't stomach paying money for a Gearbox game. Nope. I don't want to give don't want to give them money. Yeah. No. I, I, I don't want to support Greasy Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly Greasy Allegedly Randy. Allegedly Greasy Randy. Maybe yes. I'll just wait for, like, a humble bundle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that, right. Well, hey. That and I heard the writing in Borderlands 3 was absolute trash oh really which i mean they didn't have what's his name ashley birch's brother anymore oh and they didn't which not that he was a huge loss but they also right. didn't have mikey newman either oh, and that was a huge loss yeah, yeah. so yeah who knows yeah all right well hey we have made it through the show so let's go ahead and wrap <laughs> things up somehow we're here somehow we made it uh, you have been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon at Nerd Overload Now. You can shoot us all kinds of emails, pew, 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 pew at staff at nerdoverload.com. Questions, comments, whatever. And you can give us a call on the Nerd Overload hotline, 586-372-8020. Leave us a message and we might play it on the show. And once again, you have to leave the message. We had like another call. Another three second of dead yeah. air. Say, wow. Say words into yes. the phone. Say words. I mean, we'll play you three seconds of dead air if you want. I mean. Technically, we could have somewhere We already. could have. Yes, that's <laughs> very true. You can also find all of our back episodes on various podcast apps such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. And finally, I'd like to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff over at davidpencil.com. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. There is no spoon. <laughs> Neo, reboot the router and you can escape the Matrix. <laughs> this show was sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes.